Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about how much work goes into giving players a choice in narrative video games. My name is Brandon Chen, I'm an author of novels, manga, webtoons, and now video games. And yeah, let's get into the video, drop a like, drop a subscribe if you're into this type of, you know, anime, manga, or writing type content. So when you have really big games like Elder Ring, Skyrim, AAA games, and you have a really big choice that can really impact the overall story and direction of a video game, there's an enormous amount of writing and technical work that has to go behind the scenes um, in order to allow for players to be able to even make those types of choices. That's why these other games like you know, visual novel games will allow for you to make these really small choices that don't really impact the overall story, but they make the player feel like like they have a choice and honestly that's that's still a lot of fun and so what I'm gonna show you right now is a example of what a narrative branch will look like so I'm using uh, this platform called Dorian which is the sponsor for today's video uh, Dorian is a narrative game engine that allows for users and players to create their own games visual novel games um, very quickly without having to code um, you can make one in minutes and it's super fun. So if you're into playing, um, you know, Atome type games or, you know, want to create your own, um, definitely click the link in my description and you can check that out. <coughs> but yeah, essentially what you have here is you have, you know, different choices, right? You can either kill character one or kill character two or not kill anyone at all. And each choice will lead down a different narrative branch, right? because killing these main characters will ultimately have a really big impact on your story. And that's why these uh, the entire story, right? It's like kind of like the multiverse. It's like, you know, what is this outcome if I, if I killed this character, right? The entire uh, rest of the story will look different. And so for these really high budget uh, AAA video games, you know, where you have a choice like this, it can lead to a completely different branch where the story is completely different. And for the, narrative designers, the creators, the studio, it's essentially like creating another game. Now, a scenario where creating three different narrative branches that are completely different, like three different ways to, to play the game entirely, sounds extremely fun in theory. It's a ton of work and I honestly, like the creators are probably thinking like, I could just create uh, another game. We could just do a spin-off game and sell it for more money. Like, why would we do this, right? And uh, because like, you know, every single, the, you're basically writing the story three times, right? So it's just like a ton of work. And that's why there's tactics that narrative designers use to get around that. For example, let's say that you choose to kill character one and not kill character two. Well, you can have an entire story now with character two is still alive. And so, you know, if you have character one, character two, two different scenarios, two different stories or what the narrative designers will most likely do is they'll have a scenario where character two is going to die anyway later down the line and so you'll have a unique section of your story immediately after you kill character one uh, where character two is still alive but eventually that character two is going to die anyway same if same as if you flip the choices character if you chose character two to die character one's alive character one might die later on in the story anyway <coughs> So that essentially no matter what choice you make in the video game, like the narrative designer, whoever created the game, whoever wrote the game, is still like in the in the car seat steering the story without having to, to rewrite like the entire entire plot. Because both characters are gonna die eventually, right? You don't actually have a choice. Well you have a choice, but you don't have a choice. It's kind of like this this weird thing. And so basically I'm telling you guys this ultimate secret, which is that narrative designers like to make you think that you have the choice. Like in these big games, Cyberpunk, GTA, Skyrim, whatever it is. But in the end, obviously it's the narrative designer who's who's steering the car. But yeah, there's a lot of different ways that narrative designers can make players feel like they have choices in the game to make the game ultimately fun. <laughs> and I might have to make another video on those types of tactics because I feel like this quick video is somehow turning into a long video. But if you're a writer um, or a narrative designer, this is ultimately something that you should be thinking about, which is how can I make the players feel like they're, they have a choice, they have a hand, 
in the story or a video game without having to write crazy amounts of new storylines, creating all these new assets, etc. You know, because there's always a balance between giving the player the ultimate experience and also like, you know, hedging your, your costs, right? You want to make the game as low cost in terms of like effort and time, but also the highest payoff in terms of like making sure that those players have a good time and have a fun time. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, make sure to drop a subscribe and comment what kind of writing content you would like to see from me in the future. Um, and yeah, hopefully, hopefully this was a fun video for you guys. Okay, thanks. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.